What we're talking about today is healthy eating tips for the holidays. Um, and Rachel, you're the you're the coach in the private group. We see this every year. Like people people go through Thanksgiving and and Christmas, and like they just eat way too much food, and and maybe maybe do some bad habits, and like they gain like 15, 20 pounds and then new year's comes around. It's like, Oh, we gotta, we gotta lose all this. So what we want to do is give you guys some tips um, and, and, and really empower you with some key principles and, and tell you some of the things we have here at native practice and help you along the way. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So little housekeeping things before we get started to ask a question, all you need to do is use the Q and a feature um, at the top. It's located at the, the bottom of your zoom window. And you may have to hit escape uh, to exit out of your full screen mode. And as we're going along, myself and Rachel, we're going to answer as many questions as we can during the presentation. And we'll also save time at the end to respond more. But also, we have another team mem member, Krista, who's going to be helping out with Q&A and in the chat as well. So we're going to make sure we get all your questions answered as we go and also at the end. And please remember this webinar is for educational purposes only where our intention here is to educate you, promote understanding and knowledge of whole body wellness. And of course, feel free to share this information with your friends. We're gonna send you a nice email afterwards with a recording to this webinar. It's gonna have a lot of other great information we're gonna talk about as well. And here's what's on the agenda. So number one today, we're gonna to talk about why protein needs to be your number one this holiday season. I would say protein is like the first step to getting on the path. We're gonna talk more about that, the importance of it. And, uh, and set you up for a win. We're also gonna talk about toxic fats, toxic fats that are often called very healthy, that are in a lot of holiday recipes that we gotta get you to avoid. We, we don't wanna get those things in the house. We don't wanna bake with them. We don't wanna use them. So gonna talk about those. And we're also gonna talk about how sleep affects your eating, especially in the winter when we have less daylight and more sleepy, more nighttime, more, more, more darkness, but we got to, we got to work with that in a good way. And then, as I mentioned before, coach Rachel is going to share her delicious, what's it called? A green Grinch smoothie recipe. Is that what's oh, coming? Yeah. We're going full holiday with the green Grinch smoothie. That's packed with goodness. And it's going to help them stay on track over the holiday season. Yeah. And don't, don't let the name fool you green Grinch, right? It may not sound appetizing, but I've tried it. It is the the best, one of the best tasting smoothie recipes I've ever had. And then we're going to talk about four easy ways to improve your holiday health routine, some good habits to get into daily that you, we don't want you to forget about. And at the end, we're going to have a Q&A with myself and Rachel. But again, as we're going, feel free to put things in the chat. Uh, we might take some pauses and Krista is always there to answer your questions too. So for those of you who may not know me or Rachel, we'll do a little introduction of ourselves real quick. So my name is Dr. Chad Walding. I'm the co-founder of Native Path. I think we've been around for like 12 years. It's been a long time. It's been a wonderful time. And now we're, we're at a beautiful place, but a little bit more about me. Like I'm a, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I'm a senior wellness expert. My specialties are in helping people get out of pain. I'm also a fitness coach. I'm a nutrition coach. I'm a breathwork coach. And generally my purpose and what I'm here to do and how I serve is just help people generally feel better. And I love it. I love it. So that's a little bit about me and, and Rachel, why don't, why don't we uh, tell us a little bit about you? Absolutely. And I am so excited to be here. For those of you who do not know me, I am Coach Rachel. I am a certified nutritional coach. And I've been in our private group now for about a little, almost five years. And it's something I absolutely love to do. I love helping people to feel better, discover their true potential. And one of my favorite ways, like Chad said earlier, is I love to show people alternative healthy recipes, which is why I'm excited to be here today because I want to share my secret weapon on how you can beat the holiday blues, curb those sugar cravings, and really stay on track over the holiday season so you don't have to feel crappy. So stay tuned because I will be sharing my favorite recipe with you guys shortly. Awesome. I love it. And like I mentioned earlier, Rachel truly is one of my favorite people in the entire world. She's one of the kindest, most giving people I know. She's the community manager of our private Facebook group. Who here listening is in the private Facebook group, the Native Path private community? Go ahead and type yes in the chat. And who can show some love to Rachel? If you just have some, if you're in there, you know how amazing Rachel is. Just show that, show that woman some love because she, she's uh, so special and she needs to receive it. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started with the holiday healthy eating tip number one, which is to focus on protein first. And so first, why, why is protein so important, right? We talk about this a lot 
um, in our nutritional webinars, but it's important for your health. If you're wanting to boost your immune system and just generally be stronger in that way, protein is going to be important. It's also incredibly important for weight management. When I'm coaching somebody and they say, hey, Chad, I've got 20, 30, 50, 100 pounds to lose, we have the conversation on protein first. It's also very important from a physiological perspective. The, the things that make up your body that make it strong and stable all has to do with protein. But unfortunately, the world that we've grown up in is has kind of moved us in the other direction, right? So the food industry and the modern world really has us eating backwards. Most modern foods that we're eating are overwhelmingly high in carbohydrates and fat. And it's typically done in that, that combo, right? And, and when carbohydrates and fat are together in these processed and refined foods, it's really hard for us to stop eating. So we're bombarded by these easy to consume, hyper palatable, again, hyper palatable, your brain is like more, 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 can't stop eating those carbs and can't stop eating that fat. And that gets us in trouble. So something to think about, there's almost zero natural sources of food that combines carbs and fat in the natural world, right? The only case, the only case where we see this is milk, which has protein, carbs, and fat, but milk is something that humans have only been consuming as babies, right? So think about that. We have way too much carbs, way too much fat. And we also have a food industry and a food pyramid coming from the government, which is telling us historically to eat lots and lots of carbs. And we're seeing disease go up. We're seeing obesity go up. So we really want to bring awareness to that and, and really bring focus back to protein because that's what we want to start. What we want to really focus on during the holidays. So three reasons everyone should start with protein. Number one, it speeds up your metabolism. You actually burn calories when your body breaks it down and digests it. It's a much more dense macronutrient, right? Protein also reduces your appetite. It cuts cravings and it reduces the desire for late night snacking. So a lot of people get in this caught in this thing of like, well, if I just eat less, right? If I just, if I just, if I just eat less, I'll be fine. You know, it doesn't matter what I eat, but it's more about the quality of the calories and what those calories do to your body, to your physiology. So protein is very satiating, right? If you have some protein, let's say like chicken or beef or pork or something, you have one bite and you're like, that's pretty good. And the second bite is like, that's pretty good, but not as good as the first bite, right? The opposite happens when we have processed and refined foods, high in those carbohydrates and high in those fats, right? The food industry, they have scientists and it's their sole job to get us to eat more. So we have to really be aware of that and work in our favor, right? We want foods that are satiating and get us away from over-consuming, right? Because it's easy to over-consume foods that are high in carbohydrates and fat. Number three, and this is super important, protein increases muscle mass, prevents muscle loss and supports soft tissue repair. And I'm speaking directly to a lot of the people listening here, I know a lot of the people here are, are likely over the age of 40, maybe over the age of 50, maybe over 60, maybe even over 70, right? And I can't tell you enough as we age how important muscle mass is to your health and your longevity in terms of giving you the muscles and strength that you need to get up and down from a chair, as simple as that. The number one reason I saw people go into, into, into nursing homes as a home health physical therapist is because they were losing muscle mass they were getting weak and they were no longer functionally independent, right? It's really important that we be aware of this. So, you know, big, strong muscles is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking dense muscles that support your body, support your skeletal system and keep you functioning. Protein is going to be very important for that. So here's some tips on choosing the right protein. Number one, you want to aim for the most nutrient dense and least harmful impact of protein, right? So we're always talking about maximize nutrition, minimize toxicity in your food. Think of that level, maximize nutrition, minimize toxicity, rather than just thinking about calories in, calories out, the way we've been taught. And the, the highest quality, the highest amount of amino acids comes from animal-based protein. Again, chicken, eggs, beef, pork. What, what else am I forgetting, Rachel? You, you got any other favorites out there? You name most of them. People like ribs, steaks, all those are delicious, especially on the holidays, a good like lamb chops. All those are delicious sources of yeah. protein. Yeah, they're great. And these usually contain the fat, right? So it has the fat in there, unlike carbohydrate and fat combinations. And no, there's very few animal sources that contain any carbs outside of dairy, again. So just, just know that. But when it comes to the most nutrient dense, it's always going to be 
uh, the quality of that animal and where it comes from, how it was raised, what it, what it ate. You're not just what you eat, you are what you eat eats. The other thing, as far as plant bro plant-based proteins, we want to bring this up because a lot of people say, Hey, what about these plant proteins? Aren't, aren't they just as good? They're okay, but also know they contain a lower density of amino acids. These are the things that actually give you your muscles, the strength that needs to be strong. And it's almost always accompanied with those carbohydrates, right? And like, like peas and beans, those things are going to have carbohydrates in there. And there's an overwhelmingly amount of digestive irritants in there. So like ever who, who gets like belly upset when they have like too many, too many beans, for instance, right? The big part of that is because it has so many carbohydrates and gut irritants in there. And those, those plant-based proteins have their own protective mechanisms that protect them from other critters in nature eating them, right? So when you consume that, you're also consuming those defensive mechanisms like lectins and uh, things that can irritate your gut. So we want to be aware of that and just know that when you're choosing protein, animal-based protein is going to be the highest nutrition, least amount of toxicity for your body. Yeah. Other tips did, on- We did have one that just came through the chat, which is we didn't cover is fish too. Some wild caught fish. It's another exactly. great protein. And, and you know what? I, I, that's a great point. I didn't bring it up because Brenda loves fish. I, my wife, I typically, I just don't like fish. I'm not a big, are you, are, do you like fish? I don't, I did not grow up eating seafood. I, that's, that's a bad thing I know, but a lot of people do like it, but I don't eat it that, at all. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good thing to remember. Yes. Fish, another, another source of protein. So top tips for eating protein. This is really important because sometimes we give these recommendations to eat protein and people are like, I, I didn't react well to it. Right. So it, it's really about how you, your body is relating to the protein. When you eat that, it's a much more dense source uh, of food. It's a denser macronutrient. So number one, when you're eating protein, it's really important to slow down and chew the food because it's more dense. We can't do what we do with like um, these carbohydrates that are easily digestible where you can just put it in your mouth and swallow, right? With protein, it's really important to slow down, chew, 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 and get your body in a nice, calm, relaxed state. And what that does when you're, when you're chewing your mouth is going to start secreting its own saliva and that saliva has digestive enzymes. And as you swallow this hydrochloric acid that you've been uh, stimulating in internally, it's going to help you break down that protein and better absorb it. Protein is not something, especially animal-based protein, is that you just want to put in your mouth and swallow. That's why a lot of people, uh, you know, they get digestive issues if they're eating protein too quickly. And the other thing is here, you want your body in a calm relaxed state. You don't want to be too excited or, or watching a war movie or the Super Bowl or anything you're like really ramped up about, you know, driving in traffic. In that state, your body's in a very sympathetic fight or flight state. All the blood is going to your extremities. The nervous system is like, I, I, I want to do anything other than eat. So it's really important to breathe. I'm a big fan of just, you know, being mindful before you eat, take a few breaths, say a prayer, but get your body in a nice, calm, relaxed state before you eat protein. It's going to have a profound impact. Also, the other thing when, when I was going to add into there too, is when you have less distractions, you're going to be more mindful of what you're putting into your body. So you're going to be more mindful when you actually are full, because if we are consumed with all these distractions, the TV phones going off, we're not going to be able to actually relate when our body's full and we tend to overeat too. So that's another reason why it's great yeah. to get rid of your phones, turn off TVs and just be aware of what you're putting into your body. So you can not only eat slowly and chew, but you're also aware when you are starting to fill up. Yeah, really. And that's a great point. Really important because people don't know because they're not paying attention. So we want to be, be more mindful, pay attention and just give your body some time to digest this. Um, I always like to say eat till you're 75% full and then just wait and see because you might be good. Um, other thing is if you need to digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, can, can also be a helpful supplement. It's a really easy thing to take. You can find these on, on Amazon, but this is something you just take about mid-meal anytime you're eating an animal-based protein. That can help you with any extra enzymes you need to break down that food. You also wanna be very aware of the fatty acid pro profile, right? So when I say fatty acid profile, I'm talking about the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, right? And this is uh, an issue because in our modern culture, we have a ratio of like 26 to one, omega-6 to, to omega-3 uh, fatty acids, right? We're getting way too much omega-6 
and not enough omega-3. And our, our ancestors, who were largely free of our chronic diseases that we're facing today, had more like a, a, a one to three ratio or one to four, you know? Um, and, and the reason why is we'll get more into fats in a second here, but in terms of the animals, going back to you're not just what you eat, you are what you eat, eats. So if you have an animal that was raised on a feedlot and it was given a lot of grains and antibiotics and hormones and like not living the way cows naturally live, that cow is going to store omega-6 fat in its fat. And if you eat that fat, it's going to be higher in omega-6 fat. Same with the eggs, same with the farm raised fish, same with the, you know, conventionally raised uh, chickens, right? So to combat this, what we want to do is get way more omega-3 fat and have animals that are raised in their natural environment. A cow that's eating grass, never fed hormones, never fed antibiotics. A chicken, same way, roaming free. Fish in the oceans, very high in omega-3 fat, very low in omega-6 fat. So the quality is very important. And also you want to rotate your meats. This is one of my biggest weaknesses, Rachel. I'm a, I'm a beef guy. What about you? Like, I, I am, I'm simple. I go between beef and chicken. So I know I need to like add more variety in as well. Bison, I got I to gotta open my horizon with more varieties of meats. Yeah. Yeah. So rotating the meats is very important um, just because it gives your, your body different vitamins and different minerals from different sources. Um, one of the questions we have a lot is, uh, and you can speak probably this too, Rachel, is when, when we give these recommendations on protein, people say, I, I can't afford that. So it's just way too much. And um, I'm a big fan of doing things on a budget. And the way, the way that Brendan and I do it is we always try to to buy in bulk, right? We go to Costco, we get uh, lots of ground beef, we get ground beef, we get chicken, um, we get pork, we get all these different stuff and we just put it in a big freezer and we save a lot of money um, that way. But you can buy in bulk um, and, that, and you can also have protein delivered to your house, but it comes out so much cheaper if you do it that way. Um, what about you, Rachel? How do you, how do you recommend saving money? Is that Definitely for me, I love to shop around sales. So I will, if something's on sale, like a certain protein source I'm looking for, buy on sale, stock up, same thing, stick in the freezer, put it in individual portion sizes. So it's nice and easy to pull out. And same thing, I'm like on Costco, I'll go buy in bulk and then divide it up as well. Those are two main ways how I can get protein sources, pretty affordable. And like I said, on sale, you can't beat that when it's already marked down. So a great way to find good quality protein and be able to stock up. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking like, so you could get a, a pound of ground beef for like six to nine dollars, probably somewhere around there. And that's enough for a, like a quarter of that. It's probably good for a meal for most people. Right. So that comes out to like two to three dollars, you know, a meal. That's that's less than a number three value meal at McDonald's. Right. So we really want to be mindful of that and just know that the protein is going to make the most difference in your health and you can make it work financially. Healthy eating tip number two coming back to fats is swapping out the toxic fats for the healthy fats. And what are the, what are the toxic fats that are really high in omega-6 that we want you to avoid? This is vegetable oil, soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, grapeseed oil, and partially hydrogenated oil. And also included is like trans fats, right? So all these fats, you know, they come from mono agriculture. The food industry will, will take land and they'll put herbicides and pesticides in there and they'll kill out all the other critters. So there's just like one thing growing and they do this to increase profits. And they, what they do is they bleach these fats. They, they add lots of solvents and chemicals. And what they're trying to do is get it to behave like a natural, natural saturated fat. But everything they do to those fats has a very negative impact to your body. It causes a whole lot of inflammation. We know now that inflammation is what leading to a lot of health issues like heart disease and diabetes and obesity and cancer and Alzheimer's. We don't want to mess with inflammation on the path, right? We want to do something totally different. So we really recommend you avoid these things. And, and not only that, they cause a lot of free radicals in the body. They make you age faster. So please, please, please. I'm always telling the Native Path team this too. If you have any of these oils in your house, just get rid of them. And there's easy substitutes for that, right? Especially when it comes to the holidays. So instead of baking with those old fats and roasting and sauteing or whipping, you know, whipping things up this season, don't use those old fats. And there's so many better ways to do things. So substitute those toxic oils in your holiday favorites with these, right? These are my, my go-to three, extra virgin olive oil, cold pressed organic coconut oil. Um, these are all great. These are the, the coconut oil is ideal for searing, sauteing and baking. The extra virgin cold pressed organic olive oil is gonna be best for your dips, your dressings, your toppings, 
pan frying and medium heat cooking. And I'm also a big fan of avocado oil. One of the great things about avocado oil is it has extremely high smoke point, meaning you can, you can use it on a, on a skillet or your oven at the highest temperatures and it's still gonna be safe for cooking. It's good for pan frying, roasting, barbecuing, and baking. And then we talk about butter. Who likes butter? Rachel, you like butter? I do. I love butter. Yeah. I, I do too. I, I, I put, I'm one of those guys, I, I put a little bit of, bit of butter in my, in my coffee. I love it. Um, but when it comes to butter, uh, we got three people raising their hands that like butter too. <laughs> please, please only use grass fed butter. This comes back to the, um, the, the fatty acid profile, right? So again, what, what dairy cows eat can affect the nutritional value of the milk they produce, as well as the butter made from it. Grass-fed butter provides about 26 more omega-3 fatty acids than regular butter. And grass-fed butter is believed to be much richer in vitamin K2, which plays an important role in bone and heart health. I know we got a lot of people in the group looking to improve their bone health and osteoporosis and things like that, dealing with that. So grass-fed butter, not conventional butter. Um, and also know that unsweetened applesauce, mashed fruit, or pureed fruit, such as bananas, pears, or, and prunes, may be substituted for vegetable oil in baked goods. And you can substitute a cup for a cup. That's a pretty unique trick right there. Yes. Rachel, are you familiar with that? Using those things instead of those fats? I, I am familiar with those. And I have to tell you, that is the first thing I did when I started here at Native Path, which is clean out my pantry. I even got my mom, everybody. I'm like, do not cook with those oils anymore. To learn how harmful they are and how simple it is to make those changes is huge. So I, I agree with you. My favorite is avocado oil to cook with, and I use coconut oil and a ghee here and there, but avocado is my go-to for mostly everything. But yes, I, I am it. familiar with unsweetened applesauce. It's, it's fun when you start cooking, how you can learn so many tricks as you go. And that's what I always tell people in the group is have fun with it. You know, cooking should be fun because you're putting these things into your body. So I love that you're including these examples for people to see during the holidays and how they can be healthier. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. We want people to be healthier. And for the people watching, who's gotten rid of those toxic fats out of their home? Like say, if, if you have, say bye-bye toxic fats in the chat, like who's gotten rid of the the corn oil, the safflower oil, the vegetable, oil, all that stuff. If you've gotten rid of that and, and you've committed to it, you never let that stuff back in your home. Say bye-bye toxic fats. We're not, we're not letting that stuff back in our home. That's not on the path. So let's get back to healthy holiday eating tip number three, which is coach, coach Rachel, you may know this, probably the most boring thing to talk about, but one of the most important things to talk about is getting our Z's right? Our sleep, our sleep. We're going to keep talking about it because it's so important. And especially during the holiday season, again, as we're dealing with this period of less sun and more nighttime, again, it's where people, people start to get depressed and seasonal affective disorder. It's a really important thing that we, we're aware we, we deal with this uh, appropriately. So you may be thinking, what does sleep have to do with my eating around the holidays? And when we have a full schedule of festivities, family traditions, you know, the change in the seasons means going out more, staying out later. We typically lose sleep and we often just completely forget about getting enough sunlight. So it has an impact. So what does it do to our health? Sleep loss can make it harder to manage your blood sugar. And when you're sleep deprived, you'll tend to eat more and crave high fat, high sugar food. Rachel, have you ever like, I don't know what your experience is like. If I don't sleep well, I find myself craving carbohydrates. Like I'm go, I go right to it and I tend to overeat, right? And it's because of the physiological changes that happen inside the body. Yeah. Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, even since the time change, I've been craving now in the evenings more sugar. So I've noticed it too, because I haven't been sleeping my best. So I am a queen of sleeping. And so any change, any disruption in my sleep, it throws me off big time. So yeah, I, I am 100% there with, it's not boring because it's so important how much you can affect your mood and especially during the holidays. So yeah, sleep is so important. Yeah, super important. So if you don't get enough sleep, your body produces ghrelin. That's a hormone that boosts appetite. Your body also decreases the production of leptin. That's a hormone that tells you uh, if you're full or not. These are very important things to do with how satiated you are and how much more you want to eat. So together, it's a recipe for putting on pounds. In one extensive study, adults with short sleep depth duration were 89% and 55% more likely to develop obesity respectively. There's a huge correlation between your sleep and how much unwanted fat your body packs on. A lack of sleep can cause the body to react as if it's in distress, releasing more of the stress hormone cortisol. 
Getting less than five hours of sleep at night has been linked to cortisol related issues like high blood pressure and getting more deep sleep can significantly decrease cortisol levels and restore balance to the body system. Cortisol is a stress hormone, right? We don't get enough. We're not producing it right. It's off balance. It makes everything worse. So a lack of sleep is, is kind of the same thing as a, as a college bender, you know, like going out all night and doing bad things to our body. Same thing happens. We're, that doesn't work when we're adults, right? So here's some tips for the holiday season. I really want everybody to start taking a priority in their sleep. Number one is really be careful with caffeine and alcohol. Um, I, I love my morning coffee, but let's keep it to just coffee has way more, a lot more dense ca caffeine sources, right? So really keep it to one and try not to ever have coffee after 12 o'clock after noon, right? Another thing with coffee is if you're someone who wakes up early, try not to have that coffee or any caffeine until the sun comes up. That's really important because the sun exposure, as we'll get to a little bit, and the, the caffeine at the same time is gonna boost your cortisol in the morning when you want it. You want your cortisol high in the morning, and as the day goes on, you want it to go down. That's your, that, that's your daytime hormone, and that's how it should work. So know that the caffeine and the alcohol, it's gonna prevent that deep sleep, and it's gonna raise your core body temperature. Your body really likes to be in a cooler state as far as the temperature, your body temperature ideally actually drops when you go to sleep. And the caffeine and the alcohol also turn off HGH, your human growth hormone. So if, if you want to really get the most out of your sleep and repair any, any tendons or ligaments that might be damaged that are causing pain, it's really important to work with that. Uh, another thing with alcohol, it's also ideal, if you can, have the alcohol while the sun's still up. And that, that helps your body process it better. If you're having alcohol in the evening when the sun's down, the closer it is to your sleep time-wise, the more it's going to negatively impact your sleep. So try to have it as the sun's up. Know that it's always best to use uh, red wines over white wine because it has less sugar content and avoid the, the sugary drinks, the daiquiris, the margaritas, uh, even beer, super high in carbohydrates, you're better with clear liquors. Okay. So just some tips on that and then create a good sleep environment. And, and one thing that we do in our modern society where we get in trouble with sleep is we, once the sun comes down in the winter time, we put all these bright lights on us, right? I mean, in the winter time, yeah. All these really bright lights on us from our, from our phones to our iPads, those big, like flat screen TVs and that light, that artificial light confuses our body, right? Our skin feels that light, our, our eyes specifically see that light and perceive it. And it tricks our body and our nervous system into thinking the sun is still up. So again, that cortisol level is supposed to go down, but when we see that, see those bright lights, the cortisol is like, oh, I wanna go back up. And, and we tend to like get a little more anxious, right? And conversely, the nighttime hormone melatonin, when the, when the sun's going down, it's dark, that's supposed to be going up. But when that bright light is coming our way, it's, it's like, what do I do? It's really confusing. So there's some tricks we have here for you. So create a dark room, especially your bedroom, right? Black out your curtains if you can. Um, pull down the, the, the drapes and all that stuff. Put tape on your fire alarms. Even that little blue light or red light, the smallest little bit of it, your, your skin can perceive that. And I'm a big fan of battery alarm clocks where you can you don't, it doesn't have light on it. It just kind of goes away and you just put your hand on the snooze button. The light comes up, but not a, an alarm clock where you see the, the numbers all the time. If you have that, it's better to just put a, put a t-shirt over that because your skin, your body still perceives that cool the room. Now this is easier in the winter time. Sometimes in the summertime, it's hot outside and it costs a little more to cool the room, but in the winter time, work with it, have a, have a cooler room. And just use more blankets because, again, your body likes to be at a cooler state. It drops like two to three degrees. So work with it in that way and just use more blankets. And as I mentioned, avoid the bright screens before bed. And yeah. a tip that I have that I agree with, Diane, she posted this in there, is the face mask. I am a, I have to have my face mask because I have my blackout curtains. But just in case I wake up and have any indication of light, it wakes me up and my brain starts ticking. So by having the face mask, I completely prevent that. So I agree with Diane, that is a must for me for sleeping. And that really helps me to create a great sleep environment that I can sleep throughout the night. Yeah, thank you, Diane, for bringing that up. And that's, that's something I forget about because I'm always sleeping at home. But when I travel, I have to take a sleep mask. So I know there's a lot of people that are gonna be traveling over the holidays, seeing family where you might be sleeping in a room 
you can't control that environment, right? But the sleep mask is really great for blocking out that light and helping you, you sleep. So thank you for, for bringing that up. And then we have essential nutrients for, for better sleep. Um, vitamin D, vitamin D, 42% of the population is vitamin D deficient. I'm becoming very passionate about vitamin D. I'm someone who gets a lot of sun. I, I go walk in the morning and the evening, I take my shirt off. I was still vitamin D deficient, still vitamin D deficient. So I'm taking a lot more vitamin D these days. And I really want everybody in our community to, to understand the importance of it. It's easy to get tested, know how much um, you should take, but at the minimum, I believe everybody should be taking one to 2000 IUs a day, but vitamin D really important during the holiday season when we have less sunlight, right? So it plays an important role in sleep regulation and a deficiency can increase risk of sleep disorders and is associated with sleep difficulties, shorter sleep duration and nocturnal awakenings in adults. So if you're someone who wakes up in the middle of the night all the time, probably, probably something going on with vitamin D levels. And it also helps regulate the natural production of melatonin. That's our nighttime hormone, our sleep hormone. The other essential nutrient for better sleep is magnesium. Magnesium is another thing that most people are deficient in. I think around 30% of the population is deficient in magnesium, largely because of the way, going back to the fats, we've been producing our food. So our topsoil itself is now more deficient in magnesium. That's where we naturally get it. But because we've been churning the soil and churning the soil and killing off everything else, even our vegetables, even, even our fruits, even, even everything, right? It doesn't have enough magnesium and magnesium is like a primer. Like if you, it's like a primer on a wall, right? You put on a primer first and then you put on the paint and, and it's good. It goes on there first to help you absorb all the other vitamins and minerals. So if your magnesium levels are off, it can affect a lot of things. So studies have shown that Older adults supplementing with magnesium experience the following. They experience a significant increase in sleep time, sleep efficiency, and melatonin production. So you're, again, going back to being the primer, your natural production of your nighttime hormone improves when you start supplementing with magnesium. And then there's a significant decrease in ISI scores. So ISI is your insomnia severity index. So a significant decrease in that, as well as cortisol, your body's built an alarm system and the amount of time it took to fall asleep. And once you're sleeping well, falling asleep fast, having that deep sleep, vitamin D and magnesium are super helpful for that. And then we have bonus holiday tip number four. This is probably one of my favorites yeah, is like move, move. People, people just stop forgetting to move in the wintertime. It gets colder, there's less daylight, and we tend to stay inside and watch Christmas shows and, and eat cookies and eggnog. And it's like, uh oh, it's New Year's and I got to goal to lose 30 pounds because I gained a lot in the past week, right? We want to be really careful with that and move and move and move. And I know it might be cold, but please do not stop going for walks, specifically in the morning and the evening when the sun is coming up, when the sun's going down. That's the, one of the best things you can do uh, to improve uh, the, this, the daytime and nighttime hormones. So studies show that walking just one mile a day, the cognition of it, improve significantly your, your cognitive function your memory we don't want people getting alzheimer's and dementia and things like that when you go walk and your eyes and your skin is perceiving all these different colors and lights looking far away looking close that is all really good for your nervous system really good for your body to keep you to keep you young to keep you going and then we got dancing rachel you like dancing right i i do i love putting especially now putting on a song and just letting loose, like no one's watching and having fun. It feels so good just to move yeah. your body. Who likes dancing? If you like dancing, put, put in the chat dancing or whatever. Just if you're someone who's a dancer, I love dancing, right? And, and, and Rachel can tell you on the Native Path team, I'm always having our team dance. We'll get on Zoom calls and have like 50 people on there and I'll just play some music. And like, we're all dancing because dancing, it just, it's really good for your body, right? And it's good for your nervous system. It's good for your balance. It's good for releasing any tension, anything you want to let go of, you can dance it away. It's so important, right? And then we have stretching. So first thing in the morning and right before bed, it's always good to have a little stretching routine. Find the stretches that you can do for your neck, for your shoulders, hips, and lower back, and then add in some really simple resistance training. You can use weights and simple resistance bands, but this can improve the physical performance, movement, control, walking speed, functional independence, bone development, and low back pain, just by all that. Now, to make this really easy, because we're like, what do we do, Chad? What do we do? Easiest thing to do is just we, we have a, we have an, a link we're going to email you, right? A after this, we're going to email you not only a recording of this and, and this great recipe Rachel's about to show you, but we're going to put a link in there 
that goes to nativepath.com where I have a whole series of movement routines that you can do with me. Like literally, there's not even any equipment involved, but they're, you know, they're 15 to 30 minutes. You just punch play and follow along and we can do it right together, like me and you. And it's really fun. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of things that help you stay strong in your bones and really improve your posture and your balance, right? It's specifically designed for, for people who are over 50 who want to just stay at home and, and not go outside and like just have fun, just keep moving. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's great. So know that we're going to email you some really great uh, movement routines after that. And I encourage everybody to keep up with their movement practice during the holidays. So, so important. It's one of the things we, get, we do to get in trouble is we just stop moving. So an easy routine to help you avoid weight gain, energy crashes, and brain fog that come with poor holiday eating habits. These are some great things we have here at Native Path that can help you with this. So collagen is something we suggest starting your day with. If Again, if you're coming to me and you're like, what do, where do I start? Start your day with collagen, that protein that's satiating, that can, that can really help you with your satiety levels and give you that lean muscle mass. And then we have vitamin D having this right before breakfast, right? Boosting those vitamin D levels when they're, it's needed that we get them boosted during the winter time when there's less day, daylight. And then we have matcha. We're going to talk more about matcha. Rachel, you tell me, I think matcha is like, people say it's the best tasting native path product that we have. People who are unfamiliar with it, they try it. And I just noticed they're like, this is the best thing ever. And they just keep ordering more and more. Have you noticed that too? I have had so much feedback from members in our community who are like, I didn't know what it was. I decided to try it. And I was pleasantly surprised. Like, I can't tell you how many people reach out. Like, can I get a link for more? Like, it's incredible because a lot of people think matcha is like, oh, it's going to be very earthy. But ours, the way it's formulated is just so creamy, so smooth, which is why I'm excited for my recipe because that is my, I call it my secret weapon. So you're already exposing it, but. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, it's a teaser. It's a teaser. But yeah, we'll talk more about the matcha. It's really great. And then we have our, our decadent sleep elixir about 30 minutes before bed, which is collagen PM. And chocolate is actually like my favorite, especially around the holidays. Brenda and I have been using this lately uh, and like we have the best sleep. And it's not that it's a, it, we fall asleep fast. Um, don't wake up in the middle of the night and don't wake up with any groggy feelings. But we'll, we'll talk more about that in a little bit too. So simply put, step one, Sim all you got to do with the collagen to get more collagen in your routine, just put one to two scoops of it. You can put it in your morning coffee. You can put it in your tea. And again, collagen is an excellent source of protein. When you start your day with protein, it speeds up your metabolism. It reduces your appetite. It cuts cravings and increases muscle mass. And that's muscle tissue burns more calories than fat tissue. Remember that muscle burns more calories than fat tissue. So the more muscle you have, the more calories you will burn. And collagen is also rich in the amino acid glycine, which has been shown to boost metabolism and promote a healthy appetite. This key amino acid also helps to regulate blood sugar levels, which can prevent cravings and overeating. That's what we wanna do during the holidays. That's where we get in trouble, too much and overeating. So step two, step two during the holidays is take a one to two dropper fulls of vitamin D3, and K2, our, our native path, vitamin D3 and K2, organic liquid drops. And this is going to be a free gift that we're going to be giving today in our holiday bundle. We'll talk more about it in a second, but you can take this at any time of the day. Um, but, but really just right before breakfast is typically when I take it. Um, sometimes I even take it in the PM, but it's not as specific there. You can, you can be a little more lenient. Um, take it right before, before, before you sit down and have breakfast and both vitamin D and K2 two are fat soluble. So taking the formula with a meal may greatly improve its absorption as well. And also know that low energy or fatigue is a common symptom of vitamin D deficiency. If you're tired, you're having energy crashes, vitamin D could be a major issue. And that's because vitamin D seems to help support mitochondria, the mitochondria in your cells, which is like the engine that keeps things going, right? Generates lots of energy for you. So I'm about to hand it over to Rachel and, and this is, we're going to bring us to step three. This is the exciting part of the webinar today. She's going to whip up an irresistible afternoon treat proven to provide stable and extended boost of energy, encourage relaxation and boost mental clarity. It aids in weight loss and it helps burn away extra calories and curb sugar cravings. So Rachel, why don't you tell us uh, what, what's going to be in this thing you're going to be making for us right here? Yes. Yeah, so like I said earlier, this is my secret weapon to really getting through the holidays, getting over the slump of having those sugar cravings and temptations everywhere. We're going to be making the green Grinch smoothie. 
And like the name Chad said, like said earlier, don't be scared from the name. It just gives it a fun festive thing to have during the holidays. But like you can see, it has clean ingredients, a half a frozen banana, half a cup of frozen mango, half a cup of pineapple. And then based on whatever you have convenient at home, either a cup of filtered water or nut milk, and then a handful of spinach and the secret weapon, which I mentioned earlier that helps me is matcha. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys because the camera angle is a little difficult. And, and, and real quick, no need for anybody to write these down. We're gonna be emailing you and that the whole recipe is gonna be in there. And again, you can come back to the recording and see all this. So I'm gonna break away here. We're gonna little, get a little close up on Rachel. Perfect. So let's see, I'm gonna move away my screen. Oh, I feel fancy. I feel like we're in a cooking show here. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so these are the simple ingredients besides the matcha that I have right here that are gonna go in today's smoothie. And what's fantastic is I'm using frozen uh, fruit right here. And frozen fruit is incredible to have because it's something you can keep in your freezer all year round. And the fruits pick that it's peak freshness, so it's gonna be preserved, have the most nutrients. So that's why I love to be able to enjoy frozen fruit year all round. So I keep it in my freezer. But let's go ahead and get started because this is a very simple recipe. And like I said earlier, this really helped me over the holiday season to beat those sugar cravings. And the reason we're going to be doing that is because we're adding matcha and matcha has monk fruit in there. So the monk fruit really helps you satisfy that sweet tooth craving. So it's fantastic to have. Let me just tell you really quick. I put my half cup of pineapple, my half cup of mango in there, my half frozen banana. The frozen banana is great because it's going to add to that creaminess and it's also going to give it some natural sweetness as well. And then we're going to throw in our one cup of nut milk. And like what I was saying about matcha is the reason why matcha is my secret weapon in this smoothie and why I'm making it for this holiday season is because matcha has MCT in there. It's a healthy fat, which will help you feel satiated. And we all know during the holiday season that we have temptations everywhere. There's sweets in the offices. There's sweets every time you go to family and friends' houses. So by having matcha either in the morning or the afternoon, you're going to feel more satiated. You're going to have your sweet tooth will be already fixed. You don't, you won't need to reach for all the sweets and things around. And not to mention matcha has a incredible, like it has a calming effect without the drowsiness. So it's like, you're going to get your caffeine boost without the jitterness that comes with like traditional coffee because a lot of people will have coffee and they have that spike and then a crash with matcha why i love this smoothie like i said it's perfect on the holidays is you maintain that energy throughout the whole entire day so it's an incredible incredible uh supplement to be adding to our smoothie today so i'm going to quickly blend it up i did add in spinach and the reason i like to add in spinach is it can add to the festive green color and it adds a little bit more fiber to the smoothie and a lot of people are scared about it. If you do not taste it because you get that creaminess from the, the banana and the fruits, you're not gonna taste the matcha or the, the spinach in there at all. We blend this up really quickly. And as we can see, this is why the color, this is where the name comes from, the color. And because I'm extra, I'm gonna make it really fun and fest for this holiday season. But you can simply do this in the morning, in the afternoon, if you need a little pick me up, this is the perfect smoothie with the matcha. Look at that delicious green, beautiful color that's coming through from the spinach and the matcha. And like I said, you can enjoy it as is, which is so good. Or because it's the Grinch smoothie, we have to finish the complete product, which is I made a coconut cream I'm gonna put a little bit of coconut cream on top. And then of course, to give the final product of the Grinch, we have our Grinch smoothie right here. So we have a filling, satisfying smoothie here with the matcha. It'll give us all day energy. It's not gonna have any crashes, no jitters. With the healthy fat, we're gonna feel satiated. With the monk fruit, it satisfies that sweet tooth. This is why I wanted to get on here to make this, to help you guys this holiday season. Because before you go out shopping, you know, in the afternoon, just have this before you go out. It's going to help you feel calm. We know how crazy the holiday season can be. So this will help you feel calm. It'll help you, it'll help you to avoid having to go out and pick up something to eat. It'll help you to avoid, you know, snacking all those sweet things. This will satisfy that sweet tooth. And one other thing about matcha, which I love about our matcha, is it's so versatile. Like today I made a smoothie with you guys. But another way, my favorite way to use this is super simple, is a matcha latte 
which is literally just having warm almond milk and a scoop of this delectable. It's so good. Great way to start your day and great for those days where you don't want that extra caffeine or you don't want that crash or you want to mix it up from coffee. This is a delicious way to have a latte. Um, also, we have matcha cookies. You can add matcha to chia seed pudding. The, the, the recipes are endless and they can all be found on our website. So I will keep inspiring and showing you different ways to use matcha. But this is my secret weapon. So I really hope you guys try this. This is something that I am passionate about because like I said, with the holidays, there's so many temptations and this will really help you to satisfy those urges. So you curve that appetite, beat that sweet tooth and have something that's good for you. So thank you guys so much. And like Chad said, the recipe will be emailed to you, but I cannot wait for you guys to try this recipe. And I, I have to take a sit, Chad. Like I have like, I've been- Do it. Okay. Yeah, and thank you so much, Rachel. And people are people are saying it looks so good. It does because it, it has all the holiday colors, right? Green and red, but uh, it's good for you. And, and and it's a great thing to have around the holidays. There are a lot of great questions about, can you have it every day? Yes, can a smoothie be a breakfast substitute for a breakfast with eggs? Yes, but I would still say get it, getting your eggs and your protein. Uh, but Rachel, thank you so much for showing us a, a great recipe that you can use with matcha. Because Rachel is so good about just coming up with stuff and trying. She's always in her kitchen. Um, so that's really, really great. So thank you so much, Rachel. We'll come back to the presentation here. And again, that recipe is going to be emailed to you. Uh, so you don't have to go around and, and uh, forget where it is. Did I lose my spot here? Let's see. Stop share. Oops. One thing Kim did. Okay. I Can did you hear me? See. Everybody here, still hear me okay? We got you. And one thing okay. uh, Kim here. did put. Chad, I think are you I lost my spot. I'm going to come back well, and bear with me for a second. So, um, Rachel, tell us a, a little bit more about uh, all the other recipes that you have on. Yes. Uh, and I was going to also address all, all the other things that you can do with matcha. Yes. And Kim did ask um, Nut Milks has a lot of additives, which is true. That is something I always talk about in the private group is making sure you read labels, making sure you read ingredients, because a lot of Nut Milks on the market are full of bad oils pumped with sugars, which is why I use milk. Milk is one of the almond milks I use which is literally just the filtered water and the, the nut. That's what you want to typically look for, which is why I said, if you don't have a nut milk, you can simply use um, filtered water. It's a good substitute because that's the fun thing about smoothie recipes is I'm showing you different recommendations, but I want you to make it work for you. So if, for example, if you don't have bananas, you can simply just use whatever frozen fruit you have. Um, but yes, always, always great, great recommendation there is to read labels to make sure you're not having those almond milks that are typically pumped full of stuff. And to go back to what Chad was saying is because I love matcha so much because I'm such a huge super fan of it. Um, we do have different recipes on our website. And one of my favorites is nice cream, which is where I take bananas and mix it with some of our matcha powder. And it makes a delict like delight, <clears throat> like ice cream dessert. That's, that's tasty. Um, we have our matcha cookies, our matcha chia seed pudding. So there's so many recipes available for you on our website, in addition to the one I created today. So definitely check those out. Are you are you back, Chad? I'm back. Yeah, we're all good. So everybody see the screen here? Yep. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue on here. And I'm, I'm getting like a little weird feedback on my end. So uh, please apologize. So next thing, step four is to end your day. In, in the best way, right? So ah, hold on just a second here. I need to. Yeah, you're so sounding good to me. Yeah, I just need to exit out of. Okay. Hear me okay? Everybody hear me okay? Good, yes. good, good. Okay. Let me come back here. Apologies, everybody. Technical difficulties, but we're back. <laughs> we're coming back to. And, and Susan just put, she said more recipes. I would love to invite you to our private group. I'm on there at least twice a week, once a week, making recipes, showing you how to use our different products. So I'd love for you, if you're looking for more recipes, also join our private Facebook community where I'm always on there to inspire you to make healthier choices. Okay. Everything good? We're back? Okay. And number three, step number four is to end your day in the best way with a half scoop to one full scoop of native path chocolate collagen pm who likes chocolate holiday 
tasting things around around the evening, right? So a warm mug, you can mix this chocolate collagen PM with, with hot water, or you can mix it with nut milk. And with five miraculous all natural ingredients to make your deeper, longer restorative sleep easy for you this holiday season. So what the five ingredients that we put in collagen PM are really uh, specifically picked out with the right levels and the right formula to get you the best sleep. So GABA, it has GABA, L-theanine, magnesium, melatonin, and also has collagen. So if you're someone who's trying to get more collagen in your diet, rather than just 10 grams in the morning and 10 grams in the afternoon, you can also get more collagen in the evening. But GABA is a very helpful uh, neurotransmitter that can help reduce the amount of excitability in your body. So if you're really excited, GABA can help with that. L-theanine has a very calming effect. It's an amino acid. Magnesium, like I mentioned, super important for sleep. And then we have melatonin, which is a natural hormone. It's your, it's your nighttime hormone. And as I mentioned, collagen, which also has a, a, the amino acid glycine, which is helpful for sleep. And the chocolate collagen tastes absolutely amazing. Do you like it, Rachel? I love it. It is like almost my nightly routine. Like I, I, it's, it's like something I look forward to turning in that tea kettle and then prepping that mug. And then it's just part of my bread bedtime routine. I love it. It's, it's so good. Yeah. So wonderful. So again, here at native path, we have, we have a standard, right? We, we try to get the absolute best, purest quality products we can. And our collagen is formulated with only one ingredient, right? It's only collagen. Right. It has hydrolyzed collagen peptides from grass-fed beef. You can get collagen from farm-raised animals. You can get type 2 and type 4. Your body is 90% type 1 and type 3. And the highest quality collagen is going to radically impact how well your body absorbs that collagen and helping you get the results you want. And we also, again, no ingredients, no harsh solvents, no fillers of any kind. Our matcha collagen combines the power of high-quality green tea and it has, as Rachel mentioned, it has MCT. These are medium chain triglycerides, which are really important for your brain, your cognition, and your energy. And it also has 2.5 grams of collagen. So it has 7.5 grams of MCT, that really beneficial fat to keep you energized in the afternoon, and 2.5 grams of collagen, just so you can get more of that. And then our vitamin D3 K2 drops. So there's many vitamin D3 uh, things out there, right? So we hear this a lot. i am already taken vitamin D3 and this and that. There's a significant difference in our vitamin D3 and K2 rather than like what you see at the local health store, right? So many different vitamin D3 capsules and pill supplements on the market. And those typically contain a lot of fillers and binders that take much longer to digest. Our vitamin D3 K2 is in liquid form and we put organic MCT oil in there. And what that does is it helps you improve the, the absorption of the actual vitamin D. Your body can process it and, 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 and stimulate, work with it a lot better. So you can get the optimal benefit from that vitamin D3. And then our collagen PM, right? This is the most conventional and natural sleep aid. Um, so, so most of the over-the-counter stuff, right, that, that people take, right? It is, it is really bad for the body. It doesn't help you get that deep restorative sleep. Um, even medications like Ambien, there's so many people that are using Ambien and over-the-counter sleep aids. Even sometimes people use NyQuil to fall asleep. We don't want you using that. There's much more natural ways to do that. And those pills and capsules, those sleep aids, they can really uh, have issues with your liver. And we had, we did a, we did a, a webinar a few times ago about uh, liver health and why it's so important yeah. that can blunt your sleep effects. And furthermore, taking high doses of a single sleep ingredient aid can offset your natural circadian rhythm even more, causing more grogginess and even dependency on some of these over-the-counter sleep aids. We really want to avoid that. That's not the case with Native Path Collagen PM. Each serving contains a perfect dose of those natural sleep support ingredients in a unique collagen peptide powder formula. And this allows you for faster absorption and to more effectively deliver your bloodstream and your tissues, right? So really great stuff. And then we're doing a wonderful holiday bundle, right? Where we're giving you a gift and you can get all these things uh, at a really great deal for watching today. So this is an exclusive webinar offer. It's a holiday bundle where you can get up to 33% off plus a free gift, plus free shipping. So what does that include? 
It includes our value size bag of collagen, which has fixed 56 servings of collagen. That's going to last people a long time. It includes our matcha. If you haven't tried the matcha, this is your chance to try it at a special deal. I know you'll love it. Um, people absolutely love the taste. It's probably our biggest reseller. And then we have collagen PM, right? So you have something for the morning and your coffee and your tea with the collagen. You have like a little afternoon thing and you have an evening thing to kind of set your day up for a win over the holiday season. And then what we're going to do as a gift is throw in that free bottle of vitamin D3 and K2, which is so important during the holidays. And again, for a limited time, we're only going to be offering that. I think Krista told us only for 72 hours, right? So from the time of this webinar, this discount and the special bundle that we're giving you is only available for the next 72 hours. This is like seriously the biggest discount we've ever given on, on this amount of stuff. And plus your bundle comes with free shipping. That's not something we normally do. So normally the retail price of all three of these supplements together would be over $164. But right now, since you guys are amazing and watching this webinar and so engaged, you're getting the power of three healthy holiday boosters at our lowest ever price, as low as $109 per bundle plus that free gift. So this is a steal of a deal. So if you click on that link, I believe Krista is going to go ahead and post a link in the chat here where you can learn more about this offer. And we're going to email you this as well. Again, only available for 72 hours, but you can choose one bundle, you can choose two bundles, or you can choose our most popular bundle, which is which is the three bundles where you save the most and you can get it at 109 for, for each one. And my suggestion is go, go ahead and get the three. Here's, here's what I would do. I think, I think if you get the three, you'll run through them pretty quickly. But another option is to give these things away as gifts, right? Like one of the things my mom always does around the holidays, she's like, hey, Jack, can you send me a lot of stuff? And she just, she, she uses it, a lot of it for sure. And then she like, she starts giving these things away as gifts. So be like my mom, like <laughs> your, your, your neighbor or your friend or your family, your sister, your brother, like give them some college and like get them on the path as well. That's another great way. But even, even so it's a great way to stock up on collagen. It's a great way to stock up on matcha. You never, you can never run out enough vitamin D, especially if, if you need more and the collagen PM and the chocolate is always great to have around. So we wanted to make sure you guys are, are seeing this and have it available and take advantage because it's a really special offer that we're giving you here today. And also want to mention that at native pass, we believe, in the quality of our products, which is why we offer a risk-free 60-day, I call it a feel the difference return policy. I know you're going to feel a difference in these products. So that means you have 60 days to try out our products. And if for any reason you're not thrilled with the results, if your bloated belly stays that way, if your energy is not supercharged, like if you don't get the best night's sleep, we will refund your money after 60 days. We're absolutely certain that you're going to see positive results in that. So you can be rest assured that you can order with confidence and knowing that your purchase is backed by our ironclad 60 day feel the difference guarantee, right? Super awesome stuff. So with that, just want to say thank you and congratulations on your, on your special offer and this, this, uh, this webinar. So to lock in your special discount pricing, you can either click on the link that, that Krista posted in the chat. And again, we will also email it to you so you have it available. But remember, it's only available for 72 hours after you're watching this here right now or after we've emailed this to you. Um, so again, we're going to email you the, the link. You're going to have the, the link to the movements that, we're going to, that we have on nativepath.com. And that email is also going to have Rachel's amazing uh, recipe. What was it called again? The Green Grinch Smoothie Recipe. Green Grinch Smoothie. Yep. Green Grinch Smoothie Recipe. All right. So thank you, everybody. And what we'll do now, I know we have a lot of questions in the chat. So I'm going to look through the chat here. And Rachel and I are going to answer some questions. And let me go ahead and stop this. Share screen. Let's come back to this. And let's go to the Q&A and see what we got here. So. So do you have any suggestions on a person over 70 who, who wants to lose weight, who has no thyroid? Th Jane, this is a question I get all the time, and it all comes back to the same thing. Start with protein, right? Start your, start your day with protein and fat as opposed to, to uh, carbohydrates, right? So when we start our day with juices and bananas and cereal, that's carbohydrates, 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 and very little fat. And those carbohydrates really spike your blood sugar with a lot of glucose and over time, you're going to have more cravings, you're going to overeat, but that extra glucose is going to signal signal to your pancreas to produce a whole lot of insulin. That's where we get in trouble. So starting your day with protein and fat like collagen and MCT, again, we have the, 
the protein and the collagen. We have the MCT in the matcha, a great way to help you. It, it, you'll notice it too. Your energy will be better. You'll have less cravings. That's the number one thing to do. And Temple said, how about shrimp and crab? Those are good too. Just, you got to make sure those are fine. There's just not as good of, of a protein sources as I would say. The amino acid profile is not as thick as say like grass fed beef or wild caught fish, but it's better than, than not having it and just having a bunch of bread. So that's okay. And pork, same thing. Yeah. Think about the quality of the pork. Um, was that pig raised in a pig feedlot or was it, was it out roaming and doing lots of things and pork tends to have more fat in it. So just know that if you have a conventionally raised pig, that's going to be higher in omega-6 fat as opposed to a, a pig grown in an ethical way, which is going to have more omega-3. So really, really good question. And why should you avoid drinking water with your meals? That's a great question that I don't think I talked about. Um, so if you remember, um, when, I, when I talked about the protein, how we need to uh, secrete more enzymes and uh, hydrochloric acid to break down that protein, if when we put food in our mouth and then we chase it down with water, what we're also doing is diluting the natural hydrochloric acid in enzymes. So I strongly suggest that people, instead of chasing their food down with their meals, is that they slow down, chew the food get your body naturally producing enzymes. And on that token, it's very beneficial to have water about 20 to 30 minutes before your meal, but then not have any, any liquids until like 20, 30, 30 minutes after your meal. That alone can fix a lot of issues that people have with uh, reflux and, 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 and issues like that, digestion issues. So really important there. Is that something you, Rachel, how do you feel about that? Have you been implementing that? I have, and I actually noticed a difference because when you when you drink with your food, it also you don't allow your body time to digest it, and you feel fuller faster. Which I'm like, and it it irritates my stomach, and I know I burp more, and I know my stomach is more burp like bubbly is the term I like to call it. So I definitely do like to keep a gap. Before I never paid attention, but once I started implementing it and started trying it to see how I reacted, I noticed my body does prefer to leave a gap. And I know some people in the private group struggled with it because a lot of people are like, well, how do you swallow your food um, if you're not having the liquids with it? Because we're so used to it. But that's the thing is if you chew your food properly, you're going to be able to swallow it. So that's something that I do see come up in our group quite a bit from that. But like you said earlier, chew your food, take your time, allow your body to digest it, and you'll notice a huge difference in how you feel. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge difference in the way you feel. So thank you. For that, Rachel. And then we have another really good question from Lynn. So Lynn said, so you don't advocate being a vegetarian nor vegan, which seems to be an increasing wave. And I was once told by a massage therapist not to be vegetarian. He said few people do well on them. And I would entirely agree with your massage therapist. Um, there's a big, a big thing going on in our culture. There's a war against meat. There's a war against animal-based protein, right? And this is a deep thing that comes down to the food industry and profits and margins and um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. And I, I, I agree with your massage therapist. I've seen a lot of people and talked to a lot of people who have tried a vegetarian diet for a long time and seen a lot of healthy issues from that because they're not getting those very important amino acids. So the vegetarian diet might look good. Like if you've seen a documentary on something, you know, you hear this story about a guy who was 200 pounds overweight, he tried to go vegan and lost all this weight and everything's good, right? If you're coming from a standard American diet that's full of processed and refined foods and uh, toxic fats, and, and you do the vegetarian diet within a whole food way, right? And, and just eat vegetables, you're going you're gonna to see improvements. You know, there's no doubt about it. You're going to see improvements. But what we're not asking is like, is that actually optimal? Especially, is it optimal for the long run? And that's where we see people start getting cavity issues, right? They start losing their teeth when they're on a vegetarian diet. They start having reproductive issues. They start getting tired and lethargic all the time because they're missing out on these very important amino acids that the humans have been eating forever. You know, if you study indigenous cultures, native tribes, you don't find any vegetarian tribes. It's a very new thing. And it, there's a, there's an agenda against animal-based protein. Um, and we see it time and time again. So if you're someone who is, is thinking that might be right for you, you know, and you want to try it, I would say, try this, try, try, try eating vegetarian for 30 days and see how you feel, see how, see how you sleep, see how, see how your joints feel, see how everything feels. And then try like a whole food, what we call a 30 day reset of, of good quality animal based proteins, good fats still can have your vegetables, right? Don't, don't stop eating those and compare, 
and compare how you feel. And I've done this test with people and every single time they feel better, they have more energy, they're stronger, they have less pain, they have less inflammation on what we promote here at Native Path. So yeah, I'm a very big fan of what your massage therapist is saying and would agree. Um, Rachel, any comments on that with what you've seen in the group? No, you definitely covered all of it. Um, I, I agree because a lot of people do think they can do one for one, like one cup of protein for one cup of like chickpeas. And then a lot of people will be like, I'm hungry all the time. Like, or, you know, so there's a, or they find themselves snacking more. So I'm really happy that you addressed too earlier that it's not an equal um, substitute yeah. for each other. Yeah. And a lot of people just really do the vegetarian diet wrong. Like yeah. they, they will eat processed and refined foods all day. And because they're not having any meat, they're thinking they're doing the right thing and they're just making everything worse. And it's, it's not good. So those are my thoughts on that. Um, uh, Carla says, how safe are high protein drinks like Boost and Ensure? So that's a really good question. When I was uh, doing physical therapy and going to people's homes, I would see Boost and Ensure everywhere and I would look on the labels. So Carla, I would ensure you to look on the labels of Boost and Ensure. And you, what you'll see is a lot of ingredients that you likely cannot pronounce. And you'll see a lot of sugar added in there, right? And, and while that might have protein that's been synthesized. It's not the protein that I'm talking about. It's going to give you the amino acids. And you're also getting all this junk and sugar in there. That's not good for you. You know, if, if that's like all you can do, that might be an okay thing. But if you can do anything to avoid that, try to get more natural sources like collagen and MCT, you're going to be way better off these pure, these pure things that we have here at Data Path. So I, I'm not really a big fan of, of boost and ensure, to be honest with you. Uh, Lord, Lynn says, I was using coconut oil a lot. Read too much oil is not good. And that's another great question. So the, the fine line with oil and specifically coconut oil is to notice what it's doing to your digestive system. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are, are noticing that when you go number two and it's like, um, uh, <laughs> it's, it's too liquidy, yeah. you've had way too much oil. You want to you want to find that point where like you can have enough fat to where that doesn't happen because that extra fat even MCT sometimes people say I took the MCT oil that's why we like the powder because it's easier in digestion but too much MCT can do that too so with the with the fats you want to find the right amount where your body is absorbing it and not turning your stool into liquid I know that sounds gross but I gotta say it but that's the key but you you definitely want good fats in your diet. But well, that also goes back to, to using a variety of fat sources for different things because they have different mm -hmm. points. So it's also important to look at how you're using it and how you're to know if you should switch it up being between avocado oil or grass fed butter. So that way you can get a variety of fats in there. Yeah. And, and cooking, you know, if you're cooking like your, your, your chicken or your meat, or you're putting a little um, grass fed butter over your vegetables, that's typically not the problem where we get in trouble is like when we when we like bake with way too much coconut oil, we put way too much coconut oil on this uh, bulletproof coffee or something like that. That's where we can really get in trouble, right? So be careful with that. And Susan said, how much magnesium should we take a day? I would say uh, a good amount is like around 200 milligrams. That's a good amount to take um, for your magnesium. Again, that's gonna help you with your sleep. It's gonna help you absorb a lot of other vitamins and minerals. Virginia says, I don't like taking all these supplements. How can I condense these supplements? And Virginia, I'm with Virginia. I don't like taking all these supplements either. Um, and what's great about the, the products that we have in this holiday bundle is, is they're not really, they don't, they're not really like supplements, right? When I think of a supplement, I think of a lot of, a lot of pills and things like that. These are things you just add to some of the things you're already doing, and it doesn't feel like you're taking a supplement. So collagen really is just a whole real food, you know, and we're doing it as pure as possible. You put a scoop in the tea, you put a scoop in the coffee and you blend it. You're not chasing down anything, right? Um, same thing with the matcha. You're just adding it. Matcha in itself is a natural food, comes from the matcha leaf, right? Uh, you add it to hot water. It's got some MCT in there. You're going to, you're going to do great. And then the, the vitamin D again, I don't like taking like the cap too many capsules. It's, you don't have that with the, with the vitamin D. It's just a dropper. It doesn't feel like that. And the same thing with the collagen PM. So like none of these really feel like supplements, you know, in that way. And, and I'm with you. I don't like that either. I'd rather get my, my vitamins and minerals from food and, and, and real whole food, like pure products. Uh, Jamie says, can you speak to collagen loading? I saw on one of your videos before how it helped your mom. I've been using three scoops of my collagen every morning for about three years. I love the collagen. That's a great question from Jamie. And thanks for watching that video with my mom. Um, so one of the reasons I 
I, I'm so big on collagen here is because most people are extremely deficient in it. You know, our ancestors would get plenty of collagen because they would eat nose to tail, right? They would, and they would make homemade broth, right? They would have all the glycine and everything in there in our native modern diets, just like our modern diets are loaded with toxic fats and loaded with sugar. It's not loaded with collagen, right? There's deficiencies that we have. So around the age of 30, our natural, our body's natural production declines. And as we go older, it gets more and more important that we, that we start supplementing with collagen in that way. So if people are just coming in and starting for the first time, I'm of the belief with the experience I've had working with hundreds of thousands of people now with collagen specifically is to get a little boost, do a little loading, right? So for different people, that can be different things. If you're, if you're really in a bad spot, if you have a lot of joint pain, if your if your bone health is really bad, it can be better to start at three to four scoops a day, you know, for a while and really stay there until your symptoms start to go away. And you'll notice like, oh, I'm feeling more stable in my body. That knee pain I had is, is, is going away and my nails are growing faster. My, I'm looking younger. Those are the kind of things you want. And once you reach that point, if you can, you know, depending on your finances, that's when you kind of want to back down a little bit to more of a maintenance dose where you're taking, you know, two to three, maybe even one scoop a day, but you want to get to that point where you, you are where you want to, where you want to be. So typically I tell people to start out, you know, taking two to four grams a day, or I'm sorry, scoops a day, that's 20 to 30 grams a day, get to a place where you're good. And then you can back down. And that's typically how I approach um, collagen loading, but thank you, Jamie. Is collagen good for men? Heck yeah. I'm a man. I take it every morning. Heck yeah, it is. I'm 44 years old. I feel great. Let's, <laughs> and, 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 you know, that's a good question. Like Teresa, because um, you'll notice a lot of people in our community, they're women. Um, they're, they're women. And I have to tell you, I think it, it happened naturally because women do a better job of looking after their health than men. I hate to say it, but like typically it's, it's the women um, that do that. So we've, we've kind of naturally gravitated to speaking more to women, but that doesn't mean in any way, um, that, that collagen's not good for men. It's just as good for men. Absolutely. Um, Anna says collagen for kids that are 10 to 13 years old. That's a really good question. And my advice on that is, is there's no need for kids to take collagen really until like they're until an adult is over the age of 30, their body's already producing collagen at a, at a good rate on its own. So I would say, you know, as far as the, you know, getting supplements or products that can help your children, just put it back to real whole food, you know, just put it back to grass fed beef and, and wild caught chickens and fish and stuff like that. But put your resources there, let the kid develop naturally. And, and not until around the age of 30, 33, is that, is it going to be really important, but great question. And then Brenda says, does the collagen peptides help with inflammation and joint pain? It does, but it does so kind of indirectly because it improves gut health. So we talk a lot about gut health and how, you know, if you're, if your gut is leaky, if you're allowing these foreign proteins to get into your bloodstream, that can set off inflammation, right? And that can make your joints hurt even worse. But collagen is like a, like a magical molecule. So if you have a leaky gut that's contributing to that inflammation, that joint pain, what collagen will do is it'll go specifically to those damaged areas and start to repair that gut lining. And that way in doing so, you're going to have less of those protein foreign invaders get into your bloodstream you'll be able to eliminate uh, waste that your body doesn't want better. The inflammation and the joint pain will go down naturally. That's how collagen can help with that. And Judith says, why should you avoid drinking water with milk? I think I already answered that. And how much collagen powder is okay to take each day? Seems like a lot. Um, again, going back to the collagen loading question, it, it's okay to take up to 40 grams each day. If you're, if you're dealing with a really hard acute issue, um, you know, somewhere between that th three to four scoops a day. So 30 to 40 grams a day until you're out of pain. Uh, but after that, for a maintenance dose, you can just have one to two, two grams a day. And if you have financial issues, I, I still would say, don't let, don't let that stop you. If you're just taking one scoop a day and that's all you can afford, that's still better than not, right? That's still better than not. What we're just giving you is a way to, to get you to a place of feeling good as quickly as possible. Because the caffeine in matcha keep you from sleeping at night? That's another really good question um, from anonymous attendee. Um, so that, the answer to that is no, right? So the, another thing is it has about the, a fifth of the caffeine that a normal cup of coffee has, but matcha also has L-theanine, right? That's an amino acid that when you take it, um, it immediately calms you. So with the, with the caffeine in matcha, you don't get that jittery feeling 
that you get from coffee that keeps you up. The matcha is a great thing to take. I'd say anywhere from like one, I mean, 11 a.m. to maybe like 2 p.m. in the afternoon, just to give you that little extra energy and it has no negative impact on sleep in my opinion. So I have a friend who was recently diagnosed with kidney disease and a doctor told her to limit protein. Um, she uses, she used to have a protein smoothie each day. Is protein not good for the kidneys? That really depends on the protein is, is fine for the kidneys unless you have a very serious kidney issue. So that what we're talking about here is someone who's had a lot of kidney damage. If that's the case, and the kidney damage typically comes from a lot of those toxic fats, right? A lot of those processed and refined foods. That's a, that's a more sensitive area. And that's also debatable. Um, but true animal-based protein, collagen, that's not going to have any negative effect on the, on the kidneys. But if you're someone who is dealing with kidney things, right, kidney issues, it's very severe, um, and your doctor is telling you something, that's where let's listen to the doctor. Let's listen to the doctor and that specific individual. But I do, do want to make a statement. Protein is not harmful to the kidneys. What's harmful to the kidneys is the toxic fats and the processed foods. A uh, question from Rachel, or no, question for Rachel from Susan. Um, do you do you buy do you buy fresh fruit and freeze it for your smoothie, or do you buy them already frozen? What do you do there? So Susan, I actually do both. So again, that goes back to budget friendly tips. Is I buy in bulk. You know, when it's on sale, um, I'll freeze it too. So I will find myself during the time when you know seasonal fruits are in the grocery store and they're marked down. I will typically buy it, prepare it, chop it up, put it in the freezer, so I have it all year round. Or if I am running low on something, I'll go to like Costco and buy in bulk. So you get a bigger quantity and I can divide it up and use it to smaller recipes. So that is how I do it. I do both fresh and frozen, just depending on however I want to save on my budget. But I'm always about ways to save money. So hope that helps. And that's a good question because it reminds me of, I actually recommend that people, especially in the wintertime, buy frozen fruits and frozen veggies because it's, it's more nutrient dense, right? So when you have a, a, a fruit and it's, it's picked, right? And it's immediately put into a freezer, there's no loss in nutrition. But if you have a fruit that's picked and then it gets shipped and then it gets shipped over there and like a week later, it's on your, your grocery store, over time, it's gonna lose some nutrition. So don't be afraid to use uh, frozen vegetables and frozen fruits. And it's another great way to save money if you buy in bulk, like at Costco and things like that and store because you can just put it in a big freezer and everything's a lot easier in that way. So, and Linda says, my MD ordered me to take about 4,000 units of D3. Uh, how much D3 does the product have? So that's good. I'm guessing you got tested too, Linda. Um, and you probably <clears throat> probably showed up as vitamin D deficient if you're, you're taking uh, 4,000 IUs. So our, our vitamin D3 K2 has 1,000 IUs per dropper. So what you would want to take is four full droppers a day to meet that need that your, M your MD is suggesting. And in that case, I would suggest try to get like three bottles so you have enough. That's why that, that bundle today is such a great deal. Uh, Diane says, I know MCT oil helps to reduce brown fat around your organs. Is one scoop of MCT oil powder enough to do that? What else works to do that in addition to the MCT oil? So when it comes to MCT oil, yeah, one scoop, like you can, that's basically what you get in the matcha because you're getting 7.5 grams of MCT or you could get the RMCT separately. I'm typically like a fan of just, just one scoop. You don't need, need any more of that. You don't need to go crazy on MCT oil. Just, just one is enough. And as far as other things that you can do to reduce that brown fat, all goes back to protein. All goes back to protein, making sure you're getting enough collagen, making sure you're getting enough animal-based protein. That's what's gonna do it. And also avoiding the toxic fats and the refined processed carbohydrates. And you got any more advice on that one, Rachel? No, I, you definitely, I mean, going back to also, you said the movement section is moving more throughout the day. That's another yeah. good thing to do. Simple things of moving, you know, parking farther away from the entrance, taking the stairs, like just different tips to just keep incorporating movement, putting on your favorite song, dancing, that, incorporating regular walks. Those are all very helpful. Super, super duper helpful. Yeah, thanks for helping me not forget about moving. And Judith says, I drink about two to three glasses of skim milk per day. Is that okay? I'm really glad you asked that because I'm, I'm not a fan of skim milk. First of all, I'm, I'm not too big of a fan in milk in general. If I was ever going to drink milk, it would be raw milk, whole milk. But as you start to homogenize milk, as you start to pasteurize it, it moves further and further from its natural state. And uh, then it becomes a, a big bolus of sugar, right? They're taking out all the fat and, and what, you're, what you're left with 
is, is a big bolus of, of, of milk sugar, right? And that can be very problematic. And that's not really um, going to be beneficial for your health in any way. And there's a lot of, there's a big belief that you, you need milk to have strong bones, right? So if you're drinking milk, specifically skim milk, because you think it's going to give you strong bones and um, it's, it's going to, you know, uh, keep you from getting fat because it's skim. No, it's the, it's the exact opposite thing. It really is. Um, so I would, I would encourage you not to have any milk, right? There's no need for any milk. Just drink water, coffee, and tea and get these other things that are going to improve uh, your bone health, like collagen, vitamin D, uh, the magnesium, and, and this weight-bearing exercise that Rachel talks about. I know that that sounds weird because you, you, on the commercials, milk, it does a body good, but it really does not do a body good at all. Like yeah. at all. So that, that's, that's my take on it, Judith. And, and that's my experience having worked with it. And um, yeah, so I would say just try that and see how you feel. You might notice a lot of digestion issues improve. A lot of skin issues will improve. Inflammation will improve. A lot of things will improve when they, people take milk out. Easy thing to do. Just try it for two weeks. See what happens and, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's see. Jamie says, my mom doesn't have her bottom teeth, so can't chew meat. What do you suggest? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. And in that case, um, that's where some like collagen, the protein can be really helpful. Taking collagen proteins and putting it in the shakes that, that Rachel made for you, right? This Green Grinch uh, holiday recipe, but all the other recipes on nativepath.com. That's a great way for her to get that. And um, there's about, also- a, How about ground meat? So instead of like a steak, we have to chew it more like ground meat that's easier to swallow too. Yeah, that can be another thing too. It's just easier to chew meat. So if, if, if that's the case, that, that can help too. If she absolutely can't have any meat of any kind, it's just, it's just not possible. Then I would say go back to um, some of the more conventional like whey proteins and things like that. Um, there's some proteins out there um, like on Amazon and things like that. You can put, just Google paleo protein and you'll find some good options there, but don't forget about the collagen. That's probably going to be the most important one because that's the, the most abundant one in the body. So I would say start with the collagen and start with the, the, the smoothie recipes that Rachel's put together. A great question, Jamie. And then we have Lynn that says, what about bone broth? Was told it was very good. Heck yeah, bone broth is good. Yeah. I love bone broth. Um, so we're, we're, Brenda and I are always making uh, soups and, and uh, doing things in our crock pot. Um, so it's great. So that's another great way to get glycine and collagen. The issue with bone broth for most people is it can be a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so you got to be someone who really likes to be in the kitchen. Um, you know, you can buy it prepackaged. Uh, you want to make sure it's not the bone broth out of like the can that typically comes from like the typical grocery store. The quality of the bone broth is really important. So if you're just getting like uh, Campbell's bone broth or whatever that is, that's completely different than some of the really good bone broths that are coming from cows raised in their ethical ways that are you know, eating grass and, and not fed any hormones and anything like that. Um, so you can purchase bone broth already made. That's really great. You can also go to uh, your farmer's market and get some bones from a cow or a chicken or even fish. You can also get some of this like whole foods where they have bones available. And there's lots of great ways to cook bone broth. You can just Google uh, making homemade bone broth. You put a bunch of bones in a soup with some water. You can put some other salts and peppers and spices in there. Um, great. I'm a big fan of that. It just takes a long time and it kind of like, it kind of stinks up the house. I don't, have you ever tried that, Rachel? It yeah, stinks it up the house and just, it gets in the couch and just things yeah. just smell for a while. Um, so, but if you can do it, go for it. And I'm, and I'm someone who, who does. Uh, Virginia says porridge. Is that okay to eat? You know what? What's, what's, what's in porridge? I haven't had porridge in a bit, but similar, I mean, like similar to like oatmeal in the morning. Yeah. So, so that depends on who you are, right? If you're someone who is dealing with any health issues or you're looking to lose weight, um, I would say no to porridge, right? If you're really healthy, you're really lean, you're not having any issues. Um, the oats, as long, you know, as long as you're truly having some porridge that comes from a good source, that's organic and it's gluten-free because gluten is a protein that can be very harmful. Uh, I would say then it'd be fine. But even then I would say before that, like, don't just have the porridge. That's a carbohydrate, right? It's a carbohydrate in the morning. You gotta be really careful about that. Throw in some eggs, throw in some good fats, like an avocado, um, throw in last night's chicken recipe, right? have that first. And what you might find is you don't even need the porridge, right? You, there's other ways to, to do that. So that's my take on that. Brenda says, sorry for a second question. Brenda, 
never be sorry for a second question, ever. Recently, I discussed taking collagen with my doctor. She had concerns about collagen causing liver, liver damage. Can you address this? Yeah, same thing. Like we've, we've never, we don't have people ever having collagen issue, liver issues because of collagen, right? Um, the damage to the liver, and actually you might want to email our customer experience team with the, the webinar we did on liver health uh, two weeks ago, where we go into that in a major way. Um, but the damage of the liver, liver is like a filter, right? The damage to it, again, comes from all those toxic fats and the processed from refined foods and, and the sugar, specifically glucose and fructose, like high fructose corn syrup that is in your dressings, that is in ketchup. Um, you just got to look on the back of it, right? Look for fructose in, in everything, like juices, like orange juice, apple juice, super high in fructose. Those are the type of things that are, that are damaging to your liver. Again, we have this culture that has made protein and, 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 and out to be the enemy. And, and that's actually the exact opposite. And there's a lot of really bad information that our doctors get and a lot of nutritionists get uh, when they come from school. And it's kind of why we're in a health crisis right now is because of all this bad information that we're getting. So a native path, we're trying to just like, steer people back in the right direction. And there's not any evidence that people are getting liver issues, like no scientific evidence, no research that we've come across that suggests that. Um, so yeah, it's just not something that, that we see in any way. So does this protein have magnesium in it? My magnesium has gotten too high, trying to increase the calcium. Um, so no, our, our, this is from Joan, I hope I, jo Joanne. Yeah, no, the collagen has absolutely no magnesium in it. Um, it's interesting your magnesium has gotten to, that's a pretty, pretty rare thing and trying to increase the calcium levels. So yeah, the, and the, and the magnesium, that's, uh, we have, uh, I believe, 10 grams, 10 to 20 grams in the collagen PM. So that's, that's milligrams in the collagen PM. So that's not going to be a problem for you, but no, the collagen has absolutely no magnesium in it. It's just pure collagen. Lynn says, love cheese, like Cabot's low lactose goat milk. That's great. That's great. That's great that you love that. Um, cheese is another, another gray area. Some people do okay with cheese. Some people do not. And a lot of it comes down to the lactose and the dairy proteins a lot of that comes back to genetics and your heritage. And like, did your ancestors back in the day have, have cheese like that? Um, so my take on cheese is kind of the same thing as my take on milk is just take it out for, for 30 days and see what happens. Most people who take out cheese for 30 days are amazed at how much better their skin and their joints feel. Um, Jane says, is whey protein okay? Only if it's a last resort. That's kind of my take on whey protein because the, these are dairy proteins, right? Um, the dairy proteins can be very problematic for a lot of people. Like myself, I notice that if I have whey protein, I get a lot of gut irritation. I start breaking out in skin rashes. So the, the, the whey protein, I'm typically not a big fan of. You know, we've had a, we've had a lot of people ask this question um, but because I, it's just not the best quality source of protein. Um, so that's why we were really stuck with, with collagen and native path and not really made any type of or gone after any type of whey protein. So that's, that's my take on that. Uh, Judah says, I don't drink tea or coffee and no soda. That's good. You're not drinking soda. I put collagen in my skim milk. I also drink Tropicana Trop 50 and occasional Mosito wine. Should I drink more orange juice? What is your opinion on Bay, Bay antioxidant infusion? Um, so good that you're not drinking soda, but I gotta be honest with you, Judah. I don't, I would not recommend the Tropicana Trop 50. And, and um, if, I, if it is what I think it is, and also the orange juice, look, look at the back of the Tropicana and the orange juice and see how many carbohydrates it has, see how much sugar it has. The reason why that's such a problem is because when you're drinking liquid carbohydrates, that gets broken down extremely rapidly in your bloodstream as sugar. Your body never in, in nature is do you get that much sugar that quickly. And that puts a huge stress on your pancreas and ask it to start producing a whole lot of insulin. And over time, if you're having that every day, if you're having orange juice every day and you're tropicana trop 50 every day with all that sugar, that's gonna wreak havoc on, on your on, on your pancreas. And you're gonna have too much insulin being produced. That's gonna lead to all kinds of health problems. So if you don't drink coffee, tea, I would I would suggest going back to water. Right. And the skim milk thing I addressed earlier, that can be really problematic for a lot of people. And what I'm guessing is your body's highly addicted to sugar. You're drinking sugar milk, you're drinking sugar and your juices. I, I would highly suggest you, you move away from that. And the Bay antioxidant infusion, 
look, I'm not real familiar with what that is. There's other ways to get antioxidants like the matcha, um, but look on the back and see how much sugar that is. If you're like, honestly, if you're someone who's dealing with any health issues, that moving away from that sugar, moving towards water and, and, and good quality beverages that don't have sugar could be like the one thing that changes everything for you and getting more protein um, and good fats in your diet. Um, so next thing, Jamie says, do you recommend a commercial brand pre-packaged bone broth? Um, apologies if I missed a recommendation when you were speaking on, on broth. Uh, fire, kettle and fire. Kettle and fire is a good one that you can get in a box. I mean, it stores a long time, but kettle and fire is a good one that you can order from Amazon. You can find that, I believe you can order from Amazon and you can find it at a lot of local stores. And there's some other ones too, but I think the ones that we use are more local, but that's a good one you can find anywhere. Just Google kettle and fire. And uh, Virginia says, I have been on a low fat diet, but eat a lot of protein. I noticed my hair is shedding badly. Is this normal? Um, well, it might be because yeah, a low fat diet is not really the most healthy thing. It's really important for a lot of, a lot of joints. So, uh, you know, I would say, why do we, why are we on a low fat diet? It's because we think that fat is, is the enemy. And a lot of people think so people, people are kind of told by the conventional health system and the conventional food system that fat's an enemy. We have this vision that it clogs your arteries, saturated fat's going to give you a heart attack. And that couldn't be further from the truth, right? The things that get you in trouble, the things that get you hurt are, are going to be, um, liquid carbohydrates and, and stuff like that. So I, I would encourage you to bring back in more of those good fats that we mentioned earlier, like avocado oil, grass-fed butter, coconut oil, olive oil, maybe a handful of nuts and seeds and, and, and get your protein from good quality, get your fat also from good quality protein sources like grass-fed beef, wild-caught fish, free-range chicken. Those are really good natural sources of fat and you might even see uh, a change. Oh, you meant low carb, not low fat. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, then we cleared it up. We, we cleared it up. In that case, what I would do is probably up the collagen. If you're taking um, 10 grams, 20 grams, I would, I would bump that up to maybe 20, 30, 40 grams and see what changes you have. That can typically uh, fix a lot of issues right there and keep drinking a lot of water. Keep thinking, keep thinking, uh, keep making things produce inside your body. So let's see, Lynn says, I take a fourth glass of Tropicana with added water and wild berry collagen can't do Oh, well, you can definitely do it. I'm, I'm not telling you not to, but the Tropicana, you know, it's just the, the juice. If you're doing that every day, um, not, not really ideal. That would be better, better to do that without it if you can. And Judah says the Tropicana has 10 grams of sugar. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not good. Uh, that's, again, that 10 grams of sugar in that liquid form is, is almost like 50 grams of sugar from a candy bar in terms of like what it's actually doing to your body. Uh, so that's good that the Bali sugar only has one gram. So that's the way you want to think about things. And just keep looking on the back of, of labels, right? Keep looking on the back of labels. So, all right. Okay. Well, I think we're out of the questions here. I know we got a lot of stuff in the chat. So I think we'll, I think we'll end it there. This was a fun webinar. I hope everybody enjoyed it and gets excited for the holidays. You had some really good eating tips. You know, we love your feedback. Um, so you can, you can keep leaving feedback in the chat. And on also, if you ever have any feedback, you can email our customer experience team. Uh, it's cs at nativepath.com. I believe is that right, Nigel? cs at nativepath.com. Support at nativepath.com. Support it. We've had, we've had, that's the old email address. Yeah. So support at nativepath.com. Yeah. And we have an amazing uh, customer experience team that can answer some more questions. If you have a question for me, um, just say I have a, another question for Dr. Chad, and I'm happy to answer that for you. And again, don't forget, we're going to email you the more information, a recording this webinar that you can send to your friends. It's going to have Rachel's recipe. It's going to have that special discount where you can get um, up to 33% off the bundles that we talked about. The, the, I got them right here. Look at that. The full bag of collagen, collagen PM, chocolate style for your, your nighttime drink, your matcha, and your vitamin D, all to keep you happy, happy and healthy over the holidays. Don't forget to move. Uh, we'll have that link in there that goes to, uh, I think we have like 90 follow along workouts that you can do on there. So I think that's it. Rachel, do you have any final words for us? I don't. This is a lot of fun and I'm super excited for everyone to make healthier choices this holiday season. So hopefully these tips will help you stay on track and helping you fill in your best. You don't have to wait till the new year to get started. You can get started now with these small changes. So thank you guys so much for joining. This is a lot of fun and I can't wait to hear your feedback on what you think of the Grinch smoothie. Oh, whew, I love it. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for your kind words, Joan. 
and Carla and Jamie and Lynn and all your wonderful questions. Thank you for your feedback. Hope you enjoyed it. And thank you, Rachel, for being our wonderful guest today. And hope you all have a wonderful holidays with your family and friends. And let's go into 2023 feeling great. Okay, let's do it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.